Happy Fourth of July. Welcome back to Deep in Bear Country, a Berenstain Bear cast. I am your host, Phil Gonzalez, and just it's a total coincidence that the 4th of July, if you were in America, the 4th of July, the United States of America, not like the continental America, but if you were in the United States of America, it is 4th of July weekend. It just so happens that I am covering a 4th of July book this weekend. I did not plan on this. I just glanced at what my next book was and... Lo and behold, it just happened to be a 4th of July book. I could not be more excited about this. It's serendipity, and it is also one of my least favorite Berenstain Bears books. So we've got all kinds of crazy stuff to talk about today, because not only is this a weirdly bad book, in my humble opinion, it is also a book that introduces some strange continuity and lore to Bear Country. That's right, we are getting some deep lore that we've never had before on this show. At least I don't believe I've brought it up before. Uh, it's 2015's The Berenstain Bears God Bless Our Country. It's a Zonder Kids book. It's a Living Lights Faith story. The late lamented Zonder Kids. And this is a weird one. This is a religious book about the 4th of July not in America. Uh, it's bear country. It's definitely bear country. And I can uh, guarantee you it's bear country and not the United States of America because on the cover, we see a coterie of be uniformed bears waving flags, backwards uh, flags that have f- 48 states each on them. That's right. The stars and stripes have 48 stars, not 50. 48. This is a country that never uh, colonized Hawaii, that never, I don't know, Seward never had his folly. He never grabbed Alaska. Uh, Let me count these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, there are 13 stripes on the flag. 13 stripes, 48 stars. I'm just saying, the term... The expression, the United States of America, the word America never appears in this book. God bless uh, a country, just some country, our country, what, bear country. This is a book I read. I read this book for the first time years ago uh, when I was in the library. Just This is before I believe I ever even started this podcast. Well, it would have been around the same time I started the podcast because this is 2015. It's 2015. We are now, we are, it's so wild. You know, except for the books that I jumped ahead on, uh, continuity wise, we are up to books that came out the year I started this podcast, which is wild. So yes, I would have read this the year I started. Uh, but not really thought much about it at the time because I hadn't got, I, at this point I wouldn't even have known who Ferdy Factual was, who does appear later on in this book. And this book is, I remember reading it and it just raised so many bizarre questions about what we're dealing with here. And the biggest one that it raised and sort of crystallized for me was, do the bears live in the United States of America? Answer as of this book. Now I know it gets changed later. As of this book, absolutely not. They do not live in any nation called the United States. They do not live in America. They live in bear country. And this is where I got the notion that bear country wasn't just the region of the country where they live. It's not just like this valley is known as bear country, although that may be true. The country they live in itself, the actual nation is called bear country in this in this book and in the series so far. Uh, it's, as we've talked about, it's history very much parallels the history of the United States of America, but not exactly. We already know that I believe the Declaration of Independence, which gets talked about here, 
was not signed uh, in bear country until years after it was signed in America. And we know that because we saw signed documentation from uh, George, I think, Grislington's uh, like signing. Like it's just, it's it, there, there are dates and facts and figures and a lot of stuff that happened in our country happened at different times and in different ways in bear country. Uh, you know, there, there was no, uh, there was no slave trade in bear country. There, there is slavery. The concept exists because their Bible is pretty much our Bible and there's a lot of slavery in the Bible. But the African slave trade never existed in bear country. So, like, in bear world at all. Uh, I, I bring that up not to try to be, like, smarmy or anything, but that affects history a lot. That changes... The, the, the concept of race is a completely different thing in bear country. I'll be talking about this. Uh, if you come to my Fringe show in August at the Minnesota Fringe Festival, I very well may be discussing this very thing, Lost in Bear Country, Birth, God, Death, and the Berenstain Bears, starring Phil Gonzalez. Uh, check out the Minnesota Fringe Festival's website for more information. Uh, so, the Berenstain Bears, God Bless Our Country. What is this book? What questions does it raise? How weird does it get? How deep does it go? Well, it is uh, summer, and brother and sister and honey are riding their bikes around the lawn. Brother is riding his super cool bike. Sister is riding his old bike with training wheels, and honey is riding a tricycle. Uh, this is a book where, once again, Farmer Ben's farm is... Well, here it's just across the sunny dirt road. At times it has taken them uh, 10 minutes to walk to Farmer Ben's. At times it's taken them half a day to walk to Farmer Ben's. We are now back in a world where Farmer Ben is just across the street. They're, his cows like are about 10 yards away from the bear's front door. As is his apiary. Like it's he, His apiary is just sitting right there. So, uh, But they're, they're all excited because the 4th of July parade is coming up. The Cubs are decorating their bikes. They're putting patriotic streamers on the bikes. Uh, they know there's going to be fireworks coming up. Mama is sewing flags and bunting to put hang up along the parade route. And Okay, and now we are getting into whew, deep lore here. We are getting into some major lore. Remember when I had a whole episode about what Mama and Papa's actual names were? Uh, Ernie and Melissa, Ernest and Melissa, Ernie and Missy, Junior and Missy. Uh, the, the bears, the, you know, mama and papa bears, real names. You know how they have real names. Remember that Ernest and Melissa. This is, I think even bigger than that, because this carries with it the implication that Papa Bear, uh, even if he's never actually taken another bear's life, he knows how to, because mama's sewing the flags and bunting. Meanwhile, Papa was trying on his old army uniform to wear while marching with other bears who served their country. Now, it doesn't say other bears like him who served their country, so for all we know, this is just an old army uniform he bought? Maybe this is stolen valor? I don't know. It just says he's going to be marching with other bears who served their country. Uh, but I assume what Mike is trying to say is that Papa Bear was in the army, and he served his country in the army. And I don't know if Papa ever saw combat, I don't know if Papa ever left bear country. I don't know if he was ever stationed anywhere other than in the continental uh, bear country. For all I know, he was, you know, he may have had a, he may have had a desk job. Just, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. We just don't know. Did Papa ever go to Afghanistan? Did he ever get sent to Barak? Who knows? Uh, he is a young man. He's still in his 30s. I, I assume, I think he's in, what, what they, Mama and Papa are supposed to be, what, in their late 20s, early 30s at this point? Uh, according to actual Berenstain Bears lore, which means that 2015, yeah, he would have, he would have served like 10 years previous. He would have, he would have enlisted probably uh, around 9-11. Like, that probably is what drove him to enlist. He probably did a couple of tours. Because you remember the whole, like, you couldn't get out of your of your your military contract at that point? You were, there was this all this controversy because guys were, men and women were uh, supposed to be done with their service. And then they kept getting sent back. And it was causing all of this. You never knew when you were actually going to be done with your tour. It was nuts in uh in the in the, in the country at that time and i but that that has to be when papa enlisted i don't know enough about military garb this is a like a, a a deep green uniform it has metals all over like bars like all over the uh upper left like portion of it of different colors 
I don't know. Uh, he's a uh, is he decorated? I don't know. I don't I don't know how there's uh, the white stripe. There's like one white band around the the cuffs. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know anything about uniforms. Uh, but but Papa has one, and unless it's like I said, stolen valor, he he served. He shot a gun. So think about that. Think about that. Uh, but he can't get it on because he's put on a lot of weight since he last wore it. And and Mama's like, look, I know you want to look your best for the big birthday party. Which, okay, I get what you're doing, Mama. You're just trying to start a conversation, and I respect that. But nobody refers to the 4th of July as the big birthday party. Like, that's never happened in the history of of, of, of humanity. Uh, I also want to point out that Mama is serving the comes a snack right now of milk and honey bread, which sounds like the most amazing thing I could eat at this moment. Uh, and it looks great. It's very thick slabs of like cookie cake. I don't know what it is. Honey bread. It looks amazing. Uh, but of course she says a birthday party and brother's like, wait, whose birthday is it? Birthday party? What are you even talking about? Again, she just used this as an excuse to say, well, the 4th of July is the birthday of our country. And sister's like, well, you mean countries are born like babies? And we do see a cute drawing of a fat baby with a bonnet on, uh, with a sash that you would usually say like Baby New Year, but it just says bear country, bear country. It's the name of the nation, bear country. And so sister's like, what do you mean? Countries are born like babies? And Papa says, in a way. And here we get the next weird part. Okay. Papa then tells them the story of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Our country was born long ago when the settlers who came here decided they didn't like being ruled by a king who lived in a faraway land. Now, this is a book for little children. I don't expect Papa Bear or Stan to get all into the weeds about the causes and... Uh, the impact of the Revolutionary War. I don't expect him to be naming names. I don't expect him to throw a lot of dates and locations at the Cubs. I understand you got to keep it simple, right? So that's fine. That's not what I'm about to criticize here. Uh, he leaves out some key points, but again, I get that this is a book for little kids. He says the settlers who came here decided they didn't like being ruled by a king who lived in a faraway land. Not really what happened. Uh, also, they weren't the settlers of the land. The land had been settled for a long time before they got there. But again, we're going to brush right past that. We do know that indigenous bears lived in the area because we saw the, well, we haven't seen much of them, but we saw the reflection of their culture in the Berenstain Bears, uh, the, the, the camping one, where they go, they go to a scout camp and their scout leader basically uh, uses... Uh, indigenous bear lore in the stories that he tells them. Uh, that was years ago, by the way, when I was still recording in the basement. So the settlers, whoever they were, didn't want to be ruled by a king who lived all the way across the ocean. So the brother's like, well, then what did they do? And he says, they created a brand new country of their own with ideas that suited the brand new country, which, okay, fair enough. That's, that's a good way to sum it up. Started a new country with some new ideas. They wrote down their decision on a famous paper and signed it on the fourth day in July. That's why the 4th of July is our country's birthday. And then brothers and then sister says, well, wasn't the king angry? And Papa's like, he certainly was. He sent soldiers to take his country back. A terrible war broke out. And we see, uh, we see revolutionary soldiers. We see the blue and the red. We see bears dressed in red. We see bears dressed in blue. We see an angry King George. Uh, we see a proud... Uh, George Grizzlyton crossing the Delaware in a recreation of the famous painting. Uh, but then we get to this page. Now, this is why this rubs me the wrong way. I totally get it. You're not going to delve into the finer points of the American Revolutionary War. You're not going to get into uh, the fights that occurred on the floor of a young Congress. You're not going to get into the Articles of Confederation. You're not going to get into any of that. But then why complicate matters by saying this? Brother says, we won in the end, right? Papa said, that's right. Sister says, thank goodness. And Papa says, and thanks be to God. Remember, it's a Living Lights book. This is not just a 4th of July book. And what's wild is this Living Lights book, we haven't, I haven't finished the quote yet. This Living Lights book is so much more dogmatic and jingoistic and weird than any of the other ones I've read so far. Uh, most of them, again, are very gentle and they're about good acts, good deeds, the stuff that Mike really seemed to want to write. This book gets weird because this is getting into like manifest destiny area. This is getting into the divine right of the United States 
area. Uh, Papa says, thanks be to God. We believe that it was God's will that our new country came to be. And it gave folks from all over the world a place to go where they could be truly free. Where they could, wait. And it gave folks from all over the world a place to go where they could to be truly free. Wait, this is a typo in my book. It gave folks from all over the world a place to go. It should be where they could be truly free or to be truly free. And it says a place to go where they could to be truly free. A place, maybe it's a place to go where they could to be truly free. No, that doesn't sound right either. In any case, you see a bunch of bears arriving at presumably Ellis Island. You see the Statue of Liberty, whatever their Statue of Liberty is called. It's a bear. Uh, and then you see a quote up in the sky that says, give me your tired, you're poor. And I do, and again, I understand you're not going to tackle the subject of immigration. You're not going to, you're not in here to tackle racism. You're not in here to tackle, uh, the fact that the, the revolutionary war was fought for the rights of only a few. Uh, you're not going to go into any of that. It's a children's book. It's a very small book trying to explain what the 4th of July is. That's right. But we throw in theology here, and all of a sudden, Papa's like, yeah, and we won because it was God's will that the United States of America should exist. And I'm like, was it? Really? Because was it? I think it may have just been that we won the war. I think it just, I don't know. It's a weird thing to put in, especially because Papa, Papa says, thanks be to God. Like, that's intense, Papa Bear. That's intense, Mike Berenstain. This is a weird book. It's just, it's a weird book. It's, because it's, because I use the phrase jingoistic, and I mean it's jingoistic. It's not patriotic. It's, 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 it be, once you cross the line from yay America to America exists by the grace of God because it's God's will that our country came to be, then that's jingoism. That is, that is nationalism on a weird scale. And I am not pleased with it. I am not happy with that. I don't like those words coming out of Papa Bear's maw. Uh, God, we're not even, we're like halfway done. Uh, oh yeah, and then Mama quotes the Bible at, at them. Mama says, as the Bible says, he brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And I'm like, excuse me, excuse me very much. You can't just quote like Exodus at people. You can't just quote Deuteronomy at people and pretend you're talking about the United States of America. What does it even mean? Uh, land flowing with milk and honey. Well, according to, uh, according to Rabbi Yuval Cherlo on myjewishlearning.com, uh, uh, the concept of milk and honey, and I'm not going to try to read the Hebrew uh, word, uh, but milk, uh, uh, in the Talmud, it talks about how milk flows from a goat udders and honey flows from the figs is it was the way that it was sort of interpreted um so if for a it's any and and this rabbi says for a pastoral people this indeed must have been an inviting description of the land the goats were a source of milk as well as meat and were very prolific in biblical times goats were a reflection of wealth and then it goes into the ban on livestock it goes into you know wh how why things flowed how they flowed uh, uh, and uh uh rabbi samson Raphael hirsch says uh it is very characteristic that the abundance of produce by zov only occurs in reference to eretz yisrael uh in Tanakh, the word Zov never means overflowing. It occurs mainly to describe a human pathological condition, and otherwise as a flowing forth caused by miraculous power. It does not seem to describe a land that develops the abundance in accordance with its natural fertility, but a land that only does this under special conditions. So, uh, the, the, the term flowing with milk and honey, it's very specifically about the, the Israelites. It's very specifically about, about the, the, the human beings who were, who were forced into a strange land, uh, forced out of a land, into a land, and, uh, by the grace of God arrived in a land or were promised to arrive in a land, uh, flowing with milk and honey, a land that belonged to them for ever, presumably, and uh, not to the United States of America. Uh, not to the shining city on the hill, Ronald Reagan. Uh, although it is pretty funny because then sister's like, well, we have plenty of that. So I also understand why Mike would be like, well, we got to get this honey quote in there because who they literally live in a land flowing with honey. Uh, there's a tree with a spigot sticking out of it that delivers honey. But there's also, in the bear's minds, cows by a river, and it is a milk river, which is weird and gross. 
And uh, that probably smells absolutely terrible. So, and, and would just become butter? Like, it would just become butter. Like, it's a churning river. Like, it, there, it's a waterfall. It would just become butter, right? Just It's just churned, in any case. The big parade comes. Papa's marching with the rest of the military. Who knows? Mayor Honeypot starts the parade. Uh, the Cubs all drive by. Papa's out there. Stars and Stripes forever. Nope, sorry. Stars and Bears forever is playing, which, okay. So, so there's the flag. We've seen before that the flag of their country, in some variants, doesn't even have stars. It has a bear head. So maybe there's versions of the flag. Maybe this is the parade flag because some of the parade flags only have like like 15 stars on them. One, two, three, four, six, seven. Some of them only have 10 stars and one, two, three, four, five, six, eight stripes. Uh, so I don't know if these actually stand for anything. Uh, there's a there's a mar- there's a parade. There's a band playing. There's a fire truck. There's old timey truck. There's a huge Liberty Bell float. Not Liberty, but Liberty. So it doesn't even mean Liberty. It means something else. Antique cars, tractors, horse-drawn wagons, history of bear country, Uh, which is funny because we don't see any of the Great Bear War in the history of bear country. Uh, They were brushing that. I guess they don't want to get the grizzlies and the bears all worked up. Uh, Cheerleaders twirling batons and doing flips. When the last cheerleader had flipped her last bike, Mayor Honeypot awarded prizes for the most patriotic bikes. Ferdy Factual won first prize, and he deserved it. Ferdy was riding an old-fashioned high wheeler and was dressed as a Bearham Lincoln. Now, I'm going to look this up. Did Abraham Lincoln ever ride a motorcycle? No. A penny, a penny farthing. Abraham Lincoln. Did you know that... Okay, okay. Um, did Abraham Lincoln ever ride a penny farthing? I can't find any information specifically. Um, there is a commentary here, though. Apparently, uh, Daniel Day-Lewis arrived at the Oscars riding a penny farthing bicycle. Um, Daniel Day-Lewis, who played Abraham Lincoln in Lincoln, he's been quoted as saying he'd like to make a film about cycling. Uh, this is a big conversation about this. Uh, I don't know. This is a weird, uh, blog I ended up on. I think it's like a super right-wing blog, but, uh, but Abraham Lincoln, okay, so Daniel Day-Lewis, who played Abraham Lincoln, arrived at the Oscars on a penny farthing bike, which is one of the, you know, it's the bike with the giant wheel and the little tiny wheel in the back, a penny farthing, because one looks, because the penny and the farthing were two different size coins, and so the wheels were like a penny and a farthing. They were two different sizes. Uh, also known as a bone shaker. But I don't know if Abraham Lincoln ever rode a penny farthing. Uh, they were only popular in the 1870s and the 1880s. Um, yeah, early type of bicycle, popular in the 1870s. And that's totally anachronistic. That is totally anachronistic. Abraham Lincoln never rode a penny farthing. He, he I, I, I don't believe he could have ridden a penny farthing because he died in, 19, in 1865. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, sorry, Ferdy Factual. Thought you were the smartest cub in bear country. This doesn't make any sense. I think Ferdy Factual just saw the Oscar. He was watching the red carpet and was like, ah, Abraham Lincoln writes a penny farthing. In any case, he gets first place. The Cubs get second place for some reason. And uh, then the fireworks go off and everyone says, God bless our country. And they place their hands over their hearts and they salute not the flag. They salute the fireworks, which is, uh, I guess it's a bear country tradition. Okay. There's so much going on here. Papa was in the military. The flag's not the same. Manifest destiny of some sort. God-given right to own the land. Kick the original residents off their land. I don't know. I don't know. What happened to the indigenous bears? We don't know. We don't know. It was never described to us. It was never, we were never given any information on it that I know. Haven't gotten to those books yet. Maybe there's one where Mike is just like, let's just clear the air once and for all. But this is a Zonder Kids book. So let's talk about it. One. How is the Bear family getting ready for the Bear Country 4th of July parade? Does your family or city do anything special for the 4th of July? Describe it. Uh, I think we do. I think we I think we do something special. We do 4th of Jaboom or what is it called? Boom, 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 hooray. What is it called? There's a there's a there's a red, white and boom. I think that's what it is. Red, white and boom. And we we're not doing fireworks this year though our city because we've because we there's a lot of political reasons but they're doing a laser light show instead and when i heard about that i was like 
can we just replace all fireworks with a super cool Pink Floyd laser light show? Like, can we just get rid of fireworks once and for all? Thank you. Uh, I'm not even one of those people who's super sensitive to fireworks. I don't really care. I'm mostly just tired of people complaining about them. And our city has smelled like smoke so much for the last few weeks because of the Canadian wildfires. I just don't need more fire in the sky right now. Thank you. Two. What did Mama and Papa Bear mean when they said the 4th of July was like a birthday celebration? Well, they meant, we don't know how else to bring this up, so we're just going to call it that so that you ask us what that means. Because that's really what it is. Like, we're just, we're being difficult, so you talk to us about it. Uh, but it is kind of, I mean, it's kind of, it's not really, it's more like the conception date. It's like if you celebrated the day you were conceived, that's what the 4th of July is, isn't it? Like, it's not... It's not the celebrating the birth of the nation. Don't, I'm not going to say birth of the nation. Uh, but it's not It's not celebrating... Let's see. Yes, and yes, and yes. So, officially, the official stance on the 4th of July, also known as Independence Day... No, as of Independence Day, also known as the 4th of July, is to commemorate the signing of the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776. Well, it's mostly to, to, to celebrate the ratification of of the Declaration of Independence by the Second Continental Congress. Second Continental Congress uh, stating that they were no longer subordinate to the monarch of Britain, King George III, and were now united, free, and independent states. Uh, remember, so Congress voted to approve independence uh, on July 2nd, but they adopted the official declaration on July 4th. That's why we celebrated on July 4th. Uh, except, except they used to celebrate it on July 2nd. I remember learning about that. Now, what's weird is... That's the beginning, and that initial declaration is that whole thing, where it's like, is the United States, and we don't know what the situation in bear country is. Is it like the United States? Is it really just a loose confederacy of separate nations, which is what the United States really is? Separate states, and by states I mean countries, and by countries I mean all these places have their own governments and constantly fight each other. Is that what bear country is? Do they do that? I know they have Texas, so I guess. Uh, but yeah, so I don't even remember what the question was I was answering. Uh, what did mama and papa mean when they said it was the birthday? That's what they meant. It's not the birthday. It's the conception, the conceiving of the, of the, it's, it's that day. It's, do you celebrate your conception anniversary? Let me know in the comments. Three, think about what the word freedom means. What are some freedoms that you think are important and talk about why? Uh, that's, that's a weird sentence, Mike. What are some freedoms that you think are important and talk about why? Question mark. It's strangely phrased. It, well, I think the freedom of speech, I think freedom of worship, I think uh, the freedom to pursue life, to pursue happiness, as they said, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those are very important freedoms. Uh, freedom of religion, freedom of speech. Uh, basically, it all boils down to, to me, is you should be free to do whatever you want to do as long as you're not hurting anybody, as long as you're not taking away from somebody else without them wanting you to. Uh, uh, but there's a lot of gray area in there and there's a lot of 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 people who don't believe in in personal freedom but i think freedoms are like those are important because they they make for a happier society i'm not going to get all into it but i know that a lot of people don't have those freedoms in our own country or in our own neighborhood so that's what i'm that's all i'm going to say right now uh, because Mike wants us to get out and do it. Collect red, white, and blue decorations like ribbons, streamers, balloons, more. Decorate your bike. I don't have a bike. Skateboard. I don't have a skateboard. Or even scooter. I don't have a scooter. Like brother, sister, and honey bear. I don't have any of those. But if you have a bike or a skateboard or a scooter like brother, sister, or honey bear, you go out and decorate it. If you don't live in the United States, all the more reason to decorate it. People will think you're weird. They'll be like, what are you doing? It's What are you doing on the 4th of July? Like, it's the 4th of July. Why are you doing anything? And that means nothing to anyone except Americans. Two. This is a weird one. Create a thank you card or poster. Okay. Telling God thanks for the blessings he has given our country. Ask him for continued blessings. You know what? I don't think I'm going to do that. I mean, you can if you want. If you want, I guess go ahead. It's weird. I don't think God wants a poster. I don't think God needs a letter or a poster. I think you can, if you if you believe in God and you believe that God for some reason has blessed this country, and if you believe that the state the country is in is an example of the blessings of an omniscient, omnipotent, divine being, uh, I guess write a card. I guess send him a card. Maybe ask him to, you know, work a little harder at it because there's a lot of a lot of people in pretty dire straits. Uh, so uh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's the official stance of Deep in Bear Country. Get God to do a better job. Uh, so what do I think of this book? I think it's not very good, but it's 
really well illustrated and it has a really dynamic cover. I like the illustrations in this book. I think it looks great. The bears are really cartoony. They're really colorful. Uh, you get to see Papa in a, a uniform. You get a lot of historical pictures, which are always my favorite. You get weird theology. You get weird national stuff. It's a strange book. I wouldn't read it to a kid, but it's a f fun book to have around, I guess. <laughs> it's the Baron St. Bears. God bless our country. I also, I bought it and returned it on Kindle because I was like, ooh, I needed to... I just wanted to have a copy that I could have in my... It never worked on the app, and it is terribly formatted when I try would try to read it. I actually returned it because I was like, this is terrible. Like, I can't even... I can't even read it. So, Mike, if you're listening, uh, talk to talk to the Kindle people about how the God Bless Our Country book is formatted. It, it's unreadable. Unreadable. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for listening. If you celebrate the 4th of July, I don't know, do whatever you want to do that day. I know what I'm doing. Getting day drunk. So that's my plans for the 4th. Um, have fun with your family if you have family. If you don't, have fun by yourself. If you don't live in the United States of America and you don't celebrate anything on the 4th of July, uh, eat a nice meal on me. Or, you know, not on me, but in reference to me. Uh, think of me when you eat. And uh, otherwise, uh, I already advertised for my Fringe Festival show, Lost in Bear Country, where I'm going to be talking about uh, ADHD. I'm going to be talking about neurodiversity. I'm going to be talking about the Berenstain Bears. I'm going to be talking about uh, maybe God, maybe death, maybe life, maybe birth. Who knows? Uh, but if you're in the Twin Cities area on the beginning of uh, August, go to the Minnesota Fringe website and check out Lost in Bear Country. Uh, pick up a ticket to see my show, pick up a ticket to see a bunch of other shows, enjoy the Minnesota Fringe Festival. It's one of the best Fringe Festivals in the world. Uh, national model, even though nobody seems to be following it. So, uh, thank you so much for being here, and I will see you all next time, deep in bear country.